Hey folks, how's it going? Realm Gaming here, back with another video. In today's video, we're going to be going over a guide for the Phase 2 Rogue of Season of Discovery. We've got a lot to go over in this guide, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, first things first, let's go ahead and go over Talents and Runes. So in this space, we're going to be running Mutilate. So as you can see here, Mutilate will go on our hand slot. And one thing that's interesting about this one is if you read the bottom of Mutilate here, it benefits from all talents and effects that trigger from or modify backstab. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at our talent tree really quick and look at what talents will modify backstab. So the first one's going to be on our subtree here, Opportunity. So it increases the damage dealt when striking from behind with your backstab, groat, or ambush abilities by 20%. So when you're mutilating your target, you want to make sure that you are behind your target at all times. Now we also have lethality here and if you see kind of in the middle there there's backstab and it will increase the damage of your backstab by 18 percent since we're putting only three points into this so once again that damage will also be reflected in your mutilate and then one final thing here is we also run cold blood because when activated it will increase the critical strike chance of your mutilate by 100 percent so as you can see here pretty much everything is going to revolve around this mutilate rune now we will also be running a deadly brew on our chest room. And the interesting point about this is it says here in the middle, if your weapon does not have a poison applied to it, it has a chance to trigger instant poison as if instant poison were already applied. So basically this means is we're not going to be applying any sort of poisons to our weapons in this phase. So if you look right above this, it also says when you inflict any other poison on a target, you also inflict deadly poison. This means whenever instant poison is applied, you will also get a stack of deadly poison on your target. And then of course, at the very bottom of the tooltip, you can see deadly poison and instant poison now gain increased damage from your attack power as well. Now, as deadly poison is being applied to our target, it does stack to five stacks. So this is where we're going to be running in Venom, and this is going to be going on our Leg Rune. So this is going to be a finishing move that deals instant poison damage based on those deadly poison stacks that we have on our target. Now, following directly after an Venom attack, you have a 75% increased frequency of applying instant poison for one second, plus an additional one second per combo point. So this means we would get five seconds at max stacks, getting the 75% increased frequency of applying instant poisons. Now, in our waste rune, we're going to also be running Shadow Step. This is going to let you basically teleport right behind your enemy. And again, this is going to be really good because our mutilate scales with backstab and being behind the target. And finally, in our feet rune, we're going to be going Master of Subtly. Axe made while stealth for six seconds after breaking stealth cause an additional 10 damage. So just a nice damage buff there. Now, just looking at the rest of our talents here, five points and improved poisons. So increases the chance to apply poisons to your target by 10%. Also taking 5 points into a vile poison, so increases your damage dealt by your poisons by 20%, and gives your poisons an additional 40% chance to resist dispel effects. So this is going to really buff our Envenom damage. We're also taking Relentless Strikes, so your finishing moves have a 20% chance per combo point to restore 25 energy. We're also taking Ruthlessness, gives your finishing moves a 60% chance to add a combo point to your target. We are, of course, taking Malice here for that 5% increased critical strike chance. And then finally, we are taking Improved Slice and Dice for that 45% increased duration. All right, then going off Wowhead here for a rotation. So what you're going to be doing is using Mutilate to generate your combo points. And then we're going to be putting those combo points into both Slice and Dice and in Venom. So at 4 to 5 combo points, you are going to be using Slice and Dice. At 4 points, you get 18 seconds, and at 5 points, you get 21 seconds. Those will both, of course, be increased by 45% due to our talents. And then while Slice and Dice is up, we will be using the rest of our combo points on Envenom. Now, you only want to be using Envenom at 5 combo points. You never want to use it at 4. This, of course, is because at 5 stacks, we're going to be getting that extra second to apply Instant Poison at a 75% increased frequency. Then finally here, let's talk about stat priority. So we're going to be going attack power as our number one stat priority over agility. Then critical strike chance, hit chance at number four, strength at five, and stamina at six. And then one thing on the hit cap there that it might not have mentioned, you want to be getting to 6% hit cap. 
All right, now let's go ahead and get into gear. I will first go over the weapons since that's probably the most interesting part of all this, and then we will get into the other items. So on this build, we are gonna be running daggers, and you can see here on the X axis, we have your main hand. On the Y axis here, we have our off hand. So one of the things that's very interesting is we are gonna be running a green item in our off hand here. I kind of scroll up so you can see that better. And the reason we're running these green items here is due to the speed. So a faster offhand just simply means more opportunities to apply more poisons. So as you can see here, it's a pretty tight race between all these different combinations of daggers, right? But if you're winning the absolute bis, it's going to be Gut Ripper in your main hand with the Sacrificial Chris of Power in your offhand. What seems to matter though more than anything is what is in your main hand versus what is in your offhand. As you can see here, if we go down the line, there's only about one point of difference between all these different offhands. And then if we look at the far side of the graph, once again, we're only seeing about one point of difference between these different green offhands. And if we look on the x-axis here, we're seeing about eight points of difference based on the dagger that's in your main hand from the highest to the lowest option. And then a couple of final things to note here, we'll be putting plus three melee damage on each weapon. And then on your main hand, make sure that you're not putting any sort of like sharpening stone buff on it if you do have a druid or a shaman for wind fury because you cannot have both at the same time so you always prioritize of course wind fury or wild strikes on your main hand over any sort of sharpening stone that you can put on it all right then everything else here i've pretty much cross-referenced with zakafi so everything here should be up to date i know i had a couple pieces off in some of my previous guides just because i was going directly off this ep score which is not 100 percent accurate mainly due to the fact that it doesn't take into account for set bonuses. So as we go through this guide, you'll see this EP score. It's pretty accurate, but it's not exact. It doesn't take absolutely everything into account. So you will see that we will have a couple of items on here. I think maybe one is the waste here that you can see the EP score is lower than this gold wrap, but in reality, it is actually BIS for us. All right, now going into our BIS headpiece here, we have the Neuralink Cal coming from Leatherworking. You can see here that it's going to give us 14 agility, 14 stamina. It does have an on use effect, which is pretty solid. And also when you use the effect, it will give you a buff to increase your melee and range attack speed by 20% for 10 seconds. That is on a 10 minute cooldown. A few other decent buffs is the 1% hit and then the plus three weapon damage. The other two options here are going to be from BFD, and if you did miss that in phase one, I'm not necessarily sure if it's worth going back and farming these two just for that. So I'd probably recommend going down to Tailoring or the Searing Gorge and picking up one of these two items here. So if you do go for the White Bandit Mask, that is going to be 11 Agility and 11 Strength, and this one will come from Tailoring. And then if you do pick up this item here from Searing Gorge, this will give us 16 Agility and 10 Stamina. Next for our neck, we have the Nomergan Peace Officer's Torque. This is going to come from the Mad King here in Nomergan. And it'll probably be difficult to get this for quite some time. So below that, we have the Shadow Shard Pendant, which comes from Maraden. But this is probably going to be... I'm not sure if Maraden is locked or not, but I know it's a very high level dungeon. It's like a 45 plus dungeon. So that one might not be possible to get either. So outside of these two, I'd say your next best option is going to be the Sinatals Medallion. And this is going to come from Honored, the Silver Wing Sinatals. Up next in our shoulders, we do have a failed flying experiment coming from a quest. So I would just highly recommend to get those pretty much over anything here. It's going to be quite a bit better than these Force Trackers, which are a world drop, which you would have to pay. It looks like 55 gold is the going price for that. So I just absolutely recommend to pick up these shoulders. They're going to be the easiest thing that you can pick up on this list by far. So just go do the quest, pick these up, and you're good to go. All right, then for our cape here, we have the dark coated cape and the prototype parachute cloak. This is going to be a 7% drop rate from Namar the Slayer in Arathi Highlands. That's going to give us 10 agility, 4 strength. And then this prototype is going to come from Nomer. It's going to give us 12 agility and 4 stamina. You can see here looking at the drop rates, both of these are going to be pretty difficult to get. So I'd recommend probably getting this blood drenched cape here. It's going to give us that 1% critical strike and that's going to come from Stranglethorn Veil. If you don't like any of these options here and you just want to fork over the gold, probably your best option is going to be the Hawkeye's Cloak here with 7 agility, 3 strength. 
All right, then for our chest here, we have the insulated chest guard. So once again, like we were talking about earlier, it's going to put this in the number three slot because I don't think it's taking into account the set bonus in any sort of way. But this is actually going to be our abyss with 17 strength, 13 agility, and then the two set for that 1% critical strike. Side of that, let's go back to the top of the list. So we have this RFD drop, the quill word harness, super low drop rate, 19 agility. I don't recommend farming for that at all. So the next best option I'd say is the Blazewind Breastplate here coming from Badlands, the Tremors of Earth quest line for 23 agility and three strength. Sorry, you can kind of see a little bit better there. All right, then we have the Force Stalkers Bracers, which are going to be bissed in our wrist slot. And then right below that, we do have the Ornate Dark Iron Bangles here, which are going to give us that 1% hit. So both of these options here are going to be kind of difficult to get right because you gotta get exalted and then a 13 percent drop rate from nomer but i would really recommend to farm out war song outriders here because this is what's really going to make you stand out from the pack is if you do have these bracers here because you can see the giant power gap between the one and two slot so any rogue that has these bracers are going to get a pretty decent bump on their damage versus ones that don't and then of course if you're just looking to you know, just get a couple easy pieces here. You can get these from the auction house. So Hawkeyes and the Imperial Leather Bracers. All right, then we already covered our weapons here. So we're going to go up to our glove. So as you see here, the Machinist gloves are actually our best in slot, but they're only our best in slot for mechanical. And the reason for that is if you look at the bottom here, plus 30 attack power when fighting mechanical units. So you're probably going to be running these in Nomergan. Now, outside of Nomer, Gloves of Holy Might are going to be our bis. So these are buy on equipped. They are a world drop, and you can buy them off the auction house. So, you know, just depending on your server, how much these are going for, I highly recommend to pick them up if you can. And the reason I recommend these is, once again, just like the Bracers, there's such a large power gap between the one and two spot. And then, of course, if there's nothing else to get, I just recommend picking up these handcrafted gloves here. Uh, from this quest in fair loss or if you don't want to do that you can get this world drop here the imperial leather gloves they give it nine strength and nine agility all right then for our waist slot here our bis is going to be this school degree waistband this is going to drop off a nomergan rebus i believe is how you pronounce it and that's going to give us 10 strength and 10 agility outside of that if you are an engineer you can craft these hyperconductive gold wraps these are going to give us a uh, one percent hit it's also going to give us a chance to flip a coin. It's going to be a 50% chance. One heads, one tails. On tails, you get 10% movement speed. And on heads, you get 3% increased chance to crit with spells and melee attacks for 30 seconds. All right, then going on to our legs here. Uh, we have our insulated leg guards, but we're not going to be using this for our two piece. So since we're not running this for our two set, these legs, we go down to these this trip runner item here that's going to give us 21 agility and five strength that's going to come from nomergan as well and what i recommend is in the meantime while you're waiting on these to drop is just go to the hinterlands and do this quest saving sharp beak that's going to give you an item with 15 strength and 15 agility then going on to our boots here so these boots are going to be our two set so you know the two set again is going to give us that one percent critical strike and then these boots as well are going to give us eight strength and nine agility. They also have a very interesting equip bonus, which will increase your effective stealth level by one. While you wait on those to drop, I just recommend going to the auction house and purchasing these Imperial leather boots off the auction house. Then in terms of rings here, so we do have a ring here coming from Zulfarak, but I believe ZF is locked. I'm not 100% sure. Um, regardless, it's a pretty high level dungeon, so this one will be difficult to get even if it is unlocked. So from there, your next two best options are going to be this Protector's Band here. That's going to come from the Silver Ring Sentinels Honored. That's going to give us 8 Strength, 8 Agility. And then behind that is the Hypercharged Gear of Devastation. And that's going to come from Nomer. It has an 8% drop chance. And that drops from Mechaneer at Thermal Plug. Outside of that, you can get this Iron Spine's Eye. Uh, because, right, these two are going to be difficult to get for, you know, probably not the Protector's Band. That's not going to be hard to get. But this ring here, 8% drop chance is probably going to be some time before you even see it drop. It's also going to be some time before you win the roll, right? So outside of that, I would probably just farm out this Iron Spine's Eye for 9 agility, 4 strength. And that's going to drop off uh, Scarlet Monastery Graveyard at a 41% drop chance. 
Then in terms of trinkets, just like pretty much every other class in the game, you've only got two options here. You get the BFD, the Void Pearl, and then you have the Euromatic Experiment 420B. That's going to come from Thermaplug as well for a 24% drop chance. So the on use of this is increases attack speed by 5% and then 18 attack power. And the Void Pearl from BFD gives you 18 attack power. Then finally, we have our crossbow here. So Falco Sting, that's going to give us a agility that comes from Nomergan at an 18% drop rate. Outside of that, you know, you might check your auction houses and see how much the silencer and swift one go for. I'm not sure how accurate these prices are. Um, one's going to give attack power, one's going to give agility. Outside of that, though, outside of these few items here, you don't have a ton of options. Um, you do have the Mithril Blunderbuss here. I don't believe that requires engineering to use. I'd probably look that up. It says it comes from engineering, but I don't think you have to have engineering to actually equip that. So you might check your auction house for that. And then there's also this Outrunner's Bow that gives three agility here from Silverwing Senatals as well. You must be revered to get that. All right, guys, that's it for phase two of Season of Discovery Rogue. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel, and we will see you all in the next one.